right. Yeah, it's the middle of the month again, and that means Boxo time. Yay. So, let's see what we get this, t this time out. We open that. A little slow today, but that's fine. So, night out in Osaka. Okay. There we go. So, as usual... Um, and of course, <laughs> it's going a little, little finicky, the box a little bit. But anyway, uh, precursor for people who don't know, this is Boksu. I do this every month and I get it from Boksu.com. I use the yearly subscription. So I spend about 40 to 50 bucks a month and I just eat snacks and I give my opinion. I don't edit it. I don't try to edit it. I just work around what happens if my camera decides to go really finicky. It happens, you know, but I just sit here and I eat a lot of food but it's mostly snacks from japan and as anyone can attest from my channel i kind of have a thing for that sort of thing and these are some of my best videos going forward so let's go with it if it goes down to the wire i will show off these little things here but it tends to get stuck while i'm trying to do it while the box is there so i try to go a little faster but I, I usually go about 30, 40 minutes, give or take. But I like to read these things and go from there. So we've got the night out in Osaka. As the sun sets, Osaka comes alive with neon lights, street food delights, and a palpable buzz. It's the perfect place to celebrate Boksu's sixth birthday. Join us for a night out in this vibrant city as we sink our teeth into snacks made in Osaka. Inspired by the street food sta staples and sweets that are worthy of any birthday blowout. And again, some of it is really good. Some of it could be really, really bad. I don't know, but that's part of the fun. Got a couple pages here to do things. And then one of my favorites is let's learn Japanese. We've got Yao Sobi, Y-A-O-S-O-B-I, Yao Sobi, nightlife. Tanjubi, birthday. Suki Yayen, I love it. Or yeah, it's, it's Suki because it's, TSU would be ska, but um, Maido or Maido, thanks as always. I'm learning phrases rather than just words. So we've got the thing. Oh, wait a minute, latte. So not a not a tea this time, but a latte. Okay, because I like to start with the teas that always shows up, and it looks like it's going to be a latte this month. Um, I'm just checking to see if there's anything else that would be. It does not look like it. So it's going to be that latte. There are lattes every once in a while, but usually it's green tea or gain matcha tea. Um, sometimes it'll be a black tea, but by and large, lattes are not something that'll happen. But this looks like Azuki sweet bean, red bean latte. Sip into this unique latte mix, which has a base made of sweet Azuki beans, known as red beans, which are a popular mochi filling in Japan. Milks, the mix does not contain milk powder, so be sure to add your favorite milk or milk alternative. Okay, latte powder into your favorite milk, hot or cold, and continue to stir the tea as the azuki powder settles over time. Okay. Um, do I do it hot or do I do it cold? That's going to be interesting. I might do it cold just to change it, because I already have the, I already have, well, I already have the water made, but if it's going to cause milk, then there's not much I can do. I don't want to heat the milk, so it's going to be a cold latte. Because I, I tend to make the water early so that I don't have to do it while on camera, but now I guess I have to do it. So we'll spend a little bit extra time making and preparing that. Okay, so you will see this for a minute or two. Uh, meet the maker, Hanaoka, founded in 1982. Hanaoka specializes in a variety of confections, including Japanese and Western sweets, cookies, and desserts. We strive to spread happiness not only to the recipients of our sweets, but also to the givers. Though consistently delight, uh, through consistently delightful treats, Hanaoka is working to ind help individuals connect and share joy. So their thing is a pie manju. And then we've got a culture guide in the back. Dazzling Dotonbori. One of the favorite districts of Osaka is Dotonbori, the famous restaurant and bar area that's illuminated by bright neon lights and billboards, including the famous Gilko, or no, Glico, excuse me, Glico Running Man. I love wandering through the streets and discovering new street food stalls, seafood-centric eateries, and more. Larger-than-life signs. 
While devouring Osaka street food, look up and you'll see monster-sized signs beckoning you to come into the respective restaurants. Wander through the streets and you'll find a giant octopus, moving crab, a puffer fish, and even a hand offering tuna sushi. Let's see, street food paradise. There's a saying in Osaka called Kuida ku, kuida dore. Or no, kuida ore. It it is one of the rougher words for me, which means eat yourself broke. Kuida ore. This area is known for its takoyaki, which are essentially fried octopus balls. Okonomiyaki Okonomiyaki or layered pancake with cabbage sauce. Okay, so again, I'm not proficient in every single Japanese word. I, I, I don't even learn no Japanese, but anyway. Um, there's something for everyone in Osaka. For those history buffs, Osaka Castle is one of the most famous historical castles in Japan. Foodies can head to Kuroman Market, known as Osaka's Kitchen, and animal lovers can see whale sharks in the aquarium. All right, and then just an advertisement for the Boksu Market. So let's get to this thing. All right, this is a thank you card. Welcome to the foodie capital of Japan and the perfect place to celebrate Boksu's sixth birthday, Osaka. Boksu and I have found ties in to this corner of the country. We have our warehouses in Osaka, so it's always fun to see our boxes packed and shipped from this city to hundreds of countries in the world. Or to 100 countries in the world. And my spouse is from Osaka. So I love spending time and sharing meals with my in-laws in there. Okay. So I need to find the locker. Usually they would put the latte right on the top. Making it easy, but they didn't this time. It's a little hidden in there. Ah, here we go. Got it. So, just set that kind of in the middle there. And while that thing, like when that f thing falls, d starts decreasing in in weight, I tend to put it towards the bottom. Oh, it looks kind of cinnamony a little bit. Best mix. I don't have a frother. I don't have a frother or anything, but hmm. Mm. All right. Enough sweetness to be nice, but nothing overpowering. Especially since a lot of this stuff is going to be sweet anyway. Um, that is really good. I'm not a latte person, but that is a that is an interesting choice. Let's just grab something and go. Um, forgot I put forgot I put the guide down there. I kind of need the guide now that I think about it, don't I? Anyway, I'm totally prepared. I know I am. Well, I just beat Dot Hack. I'm in a bit of a frazzled mood. No. No. Ooh. Okay, so this is this is the one from the uh, Hana Okaori. The Pai Manju Sweet Potato. Um, The Pai Manju Sweet Potato. Excuse me, there was a 
colon there. This snack has a unique twist on a classic Japanese treat called a manju, which is a filled flour-based pa pastry. This version uses a pie crust as its outer layer and is filled with Japanese sweet potato. Right. Manju to me is like a breaded, like a big kind of fat Twinkie kind of thing. Totally sophisticated. That's what you came here for. Sophisticated work. Uh oh. A little crumbly on the top there. Okay, so. Yeah, so it's a little crumbly, as you can see. To turn it and we'll get the pastry filling, the sweet potato filling. Let's go on that camera. You can see kind of how big this is in size. Let's get the breading first because it was going to fall off. A little sweet. Mmm. Very good start. Oh, oh yeah, that is sweet potato. Very nice. And it's gonna pair it's gonna pair very well with the Azuki bean latte, so mm. Think of a crumbly breaded donut in a way, but with sweet potato. Pretty nice. I'm hoping I don't drop this. It's kind of nice having something having something cold for a change. This is big. Caramel nut muffin. Gee, I wonder what this is called. <laughs> Because sometimes it'll have the Japanese words and the Japanese kanji and stuff. Other times it'll tell you right on the thing. Caramel nut muffin. So, seeing a couple of sweet potato options as well. The uh, caramel nut muffin. This thing looks big. All right. So, made with caramelized dough, this muffin is filled with almonds for a slightly savory aroma and an added crunch. Savor this confection as your breakfast the morning after your birthday. Um, my birthday is about four, actually five months away, but whatever. Maybe I will go to Japan before my 40th birthday. That would be a nice touch. Um, but gotta save money first. But people have said the yen is down, so it's all, uh, it's in a case where it's gonna be, yeah, there you go. So it actually is advantageous right now to go if I wanted to. Tear it down and yeah, let's show it to you again. Now that the wrapper's off, it's pretty substantial. It's not the biggest muffin I've ever seen, but it's more kind of round and flat than it is big. Tastes a lot like the manju just now, but very breaded, good sugar. Nothing overpowering. The nuts are there, but they're not intrusive. It's it's very uh, banana nut bread kind of feel to it. Hmm. Yeah. So think of caramel instead of banana. That's the best way I would describe it. I'll have to pick it up later. <laughs> Big. Okay, well, that was very big, but we've got an Osaka Caramel Almond Crush Cookie. These things are usually my favorites. Um, crisp Biscuit Sandwich, soft, sweet cream, and crushed almonds and caramel added on top. The ultimate party in your mouth. Is this going to be like the Ryuji 
meaty explosion into my mouth thing. I don't know. No, meaty explosion is probably something different. Nope. <laughs> no screensaver. Don't do that. Don't screw it. Don't screw me up. All right, this looks more like a wafer than usually the crunches, but all right, looks like a wafer kind of vibe to it. A lot smaller than the last one was. Should be easier to eat. When they said crunchy, they weren't kidding. Um. Best way I would describe it would be when you're drinking almond milk and you realize it's not as sugary or as salty as it sounds, and you definitely get that nutty feel into it, but in a wafer. Those vanilla wafers, but with almonds and crunchy feel. Still pretty good, because you never know if you're going to get stuck with something kind of crazy. And there we go. <laughs> the main camera was starting to fizzle. Maybe one more before my latte goes. Okay, this looks like or might be orange. Um, when it's early on, it's like so many to pick from. What do I do? Um. Oh, this is no. This is the. It's on the next. It's on the page next to it. Excuse me. I can tell I'm already enjoying it because of all that I'm eating. Uh, yeah. All right. Aji Karuta. Honey and soy sauce. Honey, yes. Soy sauce mm, yeah, might be okay. Uh, sweet and savory mix or mingle together as deep fried rice cracker. Filled and flavored with acacia, honey, and soy sauce. Uh, soy sauce, it really depends what the extra stuff is and depends on the intensity. So, yeah, we'll see. Honey and soy sauce sounds like a good idea. And yeah, the other side opened up a little easier than the others. Yeah. Oh, this is it's another one of those big senbei. Oh, there you go. Pretty big. Just ugh, very big. Probably 60% soy sauce, 40% honey. It peaks in there, but maybe even 30%. You can tell it's there, but not not great. But the soy sauce isn't overpowering either. So. And, yeah, very big crunch. The salt crystals are getting stuck to my finger really fast. The sugar fell all the way to the bottom, which is good, I suppose. All right. Let's... Um... All right, so this looks very squiddy. I don't know. It's probably another senbei, but I'm not sure. Uh... I'm not. Not quite sure what they're going for with this, but we'll find out together, won't we? Um, it's a potato snack. Takoyaki. Okay. All right, so it's takoyaki flavor. Obviously, they, they can't grill takoyaki and put them in here. There's just no way. But this is the closest I'm probably going to get. 
Uh, crispy t- potato snacks are a savory interpretation of takoyaki, one of Osaka's classic street foods. I'm not a seafood person. I'm telling you right up front. If they're going to turn a potato snack into the thing, I, eh, it's not exactly my, my favorite. But I guess I'll find out. Make sure. Alright, looks like it's a smaller senbei. Yeah, it's... It's a couple smaller. So they kind of... Kind of broke. Kind of broke apart. So there was two of them in there, but it broke. So we'll try it here. Very fish sauce. Very sweet. A um, little bit of an aftertaste right there. Um, otherwise, it's a bit thicker than a lace potato chip. That's the best way I would describe it. But only a smidge. No. Oh. It tastes like the salt and vinegar chip with a little bit of a... Yeah. Think of it like halfway between salt and vinegar and a barbecue chip. Not a bad one. Okay. They definitely look different. The more it lingers, the more that it actually tasted really good. I was leery for a second because sometimes the seafood doesn't always work. Um, no. No. Uh -huh. The Osaka Tart Cookie. Made up of three layers of crispy biscuits filled with white chocolate. Hooray! This not-too-sweet cookie features words in Osaka's uh, famous dialect decorated on top of milk chocolate. So you're saying chocolate and milk chocolate. I'm probably going to like this. At least that's usually the hope. Um, white chocolate, peanut butter, and mint. I always say those are my top three. So, there we go. Not sure which direction it's supposed to be, but big enough. Hmm. I don't know. I was kind of expecting this to mix together better. It didn't. Um, it definitely feels like you're biting into the biscuit, then you're biting into the plate of, of white chocolate, and then you're getting into the milk chocolate. It's not a good mixer. It's three things topped on each other. It's all right. It's all good. It's just, it doesn't blend or mix. Don't put in there because we're going to get one right here. Mm. Mm. Le Popo Farm. No! Damn! Stand mm. over. <laughs> and remember, you were here when Strife had to bend over. Yeah, it's called La Popo Farm, and now I'm going to make the Pepperidge Farm joke. Because La Popo Farm remembers. Let's see if we remember this any good. Alright. Sweet potato apple pie cookie. Okay. Lots of sweet potato in this setup. An exclusive collaboration between Fruta Seca and La Popo Farm, a popular sweet potato store in Osaka, these cookies combine an apple pie with Japanese sweet potatoes for a comforting snack. Warm it up in the toaster, which I don't have plugged in, for that freshly baked taste. I'm okay with apple pie. I, I'm more 
I'm I'm more into stuff like pumpkin or even pecan. But I don't know. Sweet potato and apple pie mixed in a cookie? I guess we'll find out if you'll open. Here. All the work cut out for me having to clean. Um there we go. So it's like that manju, but smaller. Very small. It's like a Nilla wafer. This is very good. Subtle apple flavor. Good breading. This is really good. Sometimes, like, flavors pop out at me really, really, really good. This is just, oh, this is comfort food kind of, kind of feel. Just making sure this is still working. Um, caramel coffee sand. Hmm. Interesting. I have said I'm not a coffee person, so nah, it is what it is. Coffee, 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 coffee. It's no. Oh, where are you? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Ah, here we go. <sighs> All right. Osaka Caramels Coffee Sand Cookie. Chocolate and caramel struck the right balance in this coffee-flavored sandwich cookie. Coffee essence is perfect for a pick-me-up snack as we celebrate birthday through the night. Again, not really a coffee person. I'm more into tea and energy drinks, but whatever. Um, sometimes coffee will work. I remember, I think it was last month's thing where it was better than, it, than I thought it would be. Oh. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, dude. Well, I sure got the coffee right away. Big wafting smell. Um. Hmm. Well, this is definitely different. As you can see, it's a wafer cookie. It's got some chocolate and caramel all at once, so it's not really an Oreo because it's kind of flat huh mm. the chocolate and the caramel help the coffee dead a little bit but the coffee's still there you get an aftertaste of the coffee um oh ah you smell it too i mean if you like coffee this could be your thing if you're not a coffee guy you're i mean you could do worse but, meh. Alright, um, these are gummies. They look lemony to me. No, there, there's, there's plenty left. Um, if I get into big bags like chips and stuff, I, t I tend to get like a couple and then I set them aside. Okay, what do we got here? Of course, I eat them later. Um, June Kisa, so June Kisa gummy, lemon squash. Crafted in Osaka, these sweet and tangy gummies have a flavor reminiscent of lemonade and soda. You can even taste the carbonation. Is that a good thing? One way to find out, huh? Ah, nothing like drinking, nothing like eating your soda. Well, let's see. Oh, I can, I can tell from the, from the, it's, it's a square, it's a cube. Oh. Oh, hey. That's pretty interesting. Ooh, sour. Mm. <laughs> mm. Uh, pockets of sour. But otherwise, really, really nice. Um, 
Uh oh. What is it? I don't even know what this is trying to be. Is it more takoyaki? Sweet potato? Certainly different is what it is. Well, we're finding out together, aren't we? Everything seems to be on. The, yep, it's ta. Uh, 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 no, talk. Taco bait. Okay. Well, yeah, it's based on takoyaki. It looks like it's chips. Uh, Kansai Umami Dashi. It wouldn't be a night out in Osaka without the city's most popular street food, takoyaki, which are fried octopus balls. Balls. I had to do it. Uh, made with the same ingredients, these rice crackers encapsulate the unique flavors of takoyaki. It's uncanny. Oh, the other crackers weren't too bad. Let's see what this one has to offer. Set you kind of in the middle there. All the fun of the stuff. And ooh, look. Can't be eating this. Don't eat this. No. That was not takoyaki. That was silicon gel. Don't eat silica gel, boys and girls. Who am I kidding? Most people watching this are 20 to 40. <laughs> but yes, if you want to eat silica gel, do not advocate that I said so. Anyway, we've got a big pile. I'm interested there. I'm going to move the... Eh. Keep forgetting the camera in the, in the different look. But anyway, let's see. I've got a big old handful. I was expecting worse, but it is what I expected. I don't think I liked it. Um, it needed a bit of sugar to mask it like the rice cracker or the smaller crackers did, or just a consistency that wasn't just so in your face. Because this is more the takoyaki that I was expecting, and that's a bad thing because it's that very fishy feel. You either really, really like it or you really, really hate it. And I'm kind of in the... Still not terrible. I have yet to taste anything so terrible. <laughs> I remember a few months back, it was the um, radish. Um, it was the spongy looking radish bites. And I don't think I actually ate the whole thing. I ate like one and didn't eat the rest. Anyway, what do we got here? Got another one of you. Mount. These are small. These are very small. Then again, after things like the muffin, I guess that's not so bad. Uh, okay. Can't really... Uh, can't really beat this. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's a dried Mekon slice. It's just orange. Go for it. Try a new take on a dried fruit. Bite into these dried mandarin oranges. These Mekon slices and a refreshing palate cleanser as you eat your way through Osaka street food. This should probably chase away the takoyaki. I will I will give it this much. The aftertaste of the takoyaki chip's not so bad. This is just not, not my thing. But yeah, these things are small. Yeah, this thing is just tiny. Very tiny. Yeah, that's orange, all right. <laughs> what can I say? It tastes like an orange. box here. Well, okay. I knew I was getting towards the end of it. 
set that one there because that's an extra. And this is the point where I always kind of weigh these options and see which one would be the best closer because sometimes I get pretty bad ones. I, I just do. And I don't like that. I want to end this on a good note, on a positive note, because this is fun. This is meant to be fun. I'm meant to advertise the fun because I don't get anything out of this. I'm not, adverti I'm not advertising it other than saying, hey, this stuff is good. You should try it. You know, um, you know? it's nice. Anyway, let's weigh what we have here. Okay, so we'll start from the thing. All right, so what do we have? Okay, we've done everything on that page. Okay. So this one down underneath is chocolate banana chips. Sweet, ripe king banana chips are fried in coconut oil and covered in silky milk chocolate for a sweet, crunchy treat. So see, now that now that the thing's out of the way, I can actually do that a little bit more. Okay, we've got Kakinotane chocolate. Try a new spin on this classic Japanese bar snack. Crescent-shaped Kakino. Yeah, Kakinotane rice crackers with milk chocolate kneaded in. Flavor of these crisps is reminiscent of a chocolate pretzel. All right, so that seems a little nicer because that one's banana chips. This one is just chocolate and cake. We've got orange stick cake. Uh, orange. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Orange. There, got it. Orange stick cake. These look like the financier cakes you'd get sometimes. Um... This tart and flavorful cake from Nakajima Taishodo is delightfully light and fluffy, infused with orange inside and out. Real orange slices are baked on top, giving it a singing freshness. And, okay, this one, certainly interesting. Scone, Crash Crispy Pizza. Okay, there's nothing like a slice of pizza at the end of a night out, so we included this addictive pizza-flavored snack. Each bite has a crumbly, crispy, crunchy texture with layers of tomato and basil. Man, all of those actually sound good. I don't have one that I just would hate to have. Um, I think the chocolate I'm gonna I'm gonna keep first. The small chocolate. This one just seems like this one is gonna like not fail me. I think what I'm going to do is the orange cake first, the banana chips, pizza, and then the chocolate. So let's go with the orange stick. You know, the orange stick cake. And let's go with it. All right. So apparently this is, yeah. These look actually smaller than the financier cake. So, yeah. Might as well keep it in there. Yeah, you can see it's kind of thick, but not too bad. So it comes with the orange on top as well. Yeah. It's a bit tough to bite into the orange bit. The orange does give it a little bit of texture. Otherwise, it's a bit sugary. Not bad. The chocolate banana. Mm. All right. Imagine if these end up being like the best ones. Oh, oh, oh. here we go. Uh, you kind of, you know, they kind of feel like chips. Oh, hey. Could have saved these for last. These are good. The chocolate works. The banana is there, but it's more of a dried banana. Certain bites you get a little bit more of a banana punch in there, but it's mostly the chocolate. Man, this is this is good. All right, so pizza flavored scone.
Alright. These feel like bugles. Um, there you go. Yeah, they feel like... I don't know. The, the shape is... Because it's, it's very... Yeah, there you go. It's not quite bugle shaped, right? So. Yeah. If you want pizza flavored bugles or pizza flavored Pringles, there you go. Ooh, nice aftertaste. Nice little, nice little powder at the end there. And finish up. Looks like I just went super boring. You just say, hey, I just want chocolate. Well, there we go. So we get our little chocolate here. And like I said, Booksu, I get every month, 40 to 50 bucks a month. And I've enjoyed this for years, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it too. I think I'm going to like this. Yeah. Can't beat just straight chocolate with a little bit of chocolate crunch in there. <laughs> but yeah, that'll do for me. I'll clean up and do all the fun junk, but I will see you guys next month. Citizens Drive, signing off.